today's video I want to talk to you about how to improve your grades and how to get a 4.0 GPA if you're in university or college. Now all the tips and tricks and are coming from my own experience. I am by no means a professional in education or anything like that. I'm just a person who went through university and did manage to get a 4.0 a GPA for three consecutive years. A little bit about myself, when I entered university I entered as a bio major and in hopes to get into medical school. First year grades were terrible, I, it was just atrocious, it was, I barely passed every science class with a C minus, a C plus. My closest to A grade was in art. I was a science major but I was taking art as a non-science option that I had to take. For my degree and I'm okay at drawing so I thought well art would be an easy option and it was for me and I got an A minus in it. The rest of the classes such as bio, chem, math, I did horrendous. Uh, so in my second year I sort of committed to myself to get better grades and also in my second year I picked up a geology degree as my second degree I took a geology class uh, as an option again and I really liked it. Okay, so some tips on how I ended up getting 4.0 GPA. Tip number one is what I found is always read a textbook. If there's a textbook for your class, you have to read it. I have I was notorious for it in my first year and I've seen other people do it. They rely on their notes for from the class and they don't read the textbook. Now, you have to read a textbook efficiently and that what's what I mean by that is you've probably seen people that open a textbook and take a highlighter and they just read it through and they think they're highlighting what's important. Only to find out at the end of this exercise is that in entire chapter is highlighted, every single sentence. It doesn't really help, it's not efficient. What I found efficient for me and how I read textbooks is you read, it twi you read every chapter at least twice. So first time you read the chapter, you don't take any pencils, you don't take pens, you don't take any notes. You just read through. So you read it as a novel and if you don't understand something in that chapter, you keep reading. Don't stress yourself about, oh, I didn't quite get this, I didn't get that. Don't worry about it. Just keep reading. Your brain subconsciously processes the information. You don't have to understand it just yet. So once you read the chapter once, I usually would leave the chapter for a couple hours or till the next day if I have time and then come back to it. This time I would read through the chapter and I would make sure I understand every single sentence in, the, in that chapter. Literally, I would read everything. And this the second time it takes much longer to read through the chapter. Uh, so I, and then, I, then as I'm reading, I'm also taking notes. So I would, I would physically write down the main ideas or the main um, concepts, formulas, whatever the subject is about. Now, what I found is that, yes, it takes a long time. Sometimes you, it feels like you are copying your textbook. Like, literally, you copy it word by word. However, it might be true, but it will help you in the long run. So, tip number two, what you have to do is read your study notes from your lectures and make notes during lectures. Again, the professor only has so much time during your lecture. I can guarantee you that he or she is talking way more and giving you way more information that's on that slide. So write it down. Don't uh, just sit there and think, oh, I'll remember this. Because you, you probably have five or six classes that you're taking and probably you won't remember unless unless you're really good at audio memorization. I'm not. I'm much more visual person. I need to see and I need to write it down to memorize. And the best way to study for this, for the lectures, is in um, cohort with your notes that you took from the textbook. So the way I would study for the finals or for the exams, I would read the lecture notes first for every subject and then I would follow up with the chapter notes that I took. Make sure I would understand every concept. Tip number three, do not study in a study group. And that goes against everything you would probably read in how effectively study, what can motivate you to study. Everywhere you will read online or, tech or books that are targeting um, audience on teaching them how to study says, yes, create a study, a study group and it will help you 
and in my experience it won't it will hinder your study progress and you would just get so frustrated um, and overwhelmed and panicked and here's why chances are and that's from my own experience we've created several study groups during my years at university and every time it's I don't know four or five people usually everyone get together and no one yet knows the material for the class so you're starting from scratch and so you're trying to study one person is usually on the phone texting calling whatever another person is seemingly studying but they're constantly on their computer googling YouTube being uh, watching funny cats on YouTube or whatnot and they constantly oh like oh have you seen this look at this this is cool so that's automatically distracting you right there uh, one person is trying to study but they think they don't need to read a chapter they just jumping straight into uh, problem sets for example and then they're starting uh, doing the problems and they don't know how to do them obviously so they come into you they're like oh hey do you know how to solve this and you're trying to help them yet you haven't studied the material yet so you're reading the problem set and then you st that's when the panic sits in because you're reading it you're like well I don't know how to do this well of course you don't because you haven't read the chapter yet you haven't studied so in a way um, the study group is inefficient now uh, there, there are two exceptions for do not study in a study group a is if you if it's a group project well clearly then you have to be in a group second is if everyone in a group already know the material and all you come in to do is solve problem sets then it's a good idea to be in a group because then you can bounce ideas off given that everyone knows what they're talking about they know the material already. If they don't, then it's just a waste of your time and it's a waste of their time. You're better off going home and just reading. Tip number four. So this technique is probably what helped me the most during the university. It helped me the most and got me through university and helped me to get 4.0 GPA in every class. It's self-taught and it's based on self-convincing, I'm guessing. And if you are, I don't know if other people are using this, they probably are, I don't know. But if you are, and if it's effective, please leave me a comment, um, tell me how you're using this, or if you, after this video, you're going to start using this, and if it's helping you, please write me, because I would love to hear from you. And basically it goes like this. Um, if you're studying for a class that's uber boring, you don't want to be in that class, but you have to for your degree, you self-convince yourself in your brain when you're studying for this class, tell yourself that this is the most amazing subject you can ever learn. So when you're sitting and reading the textbook and actually you're like, well, this is so boring, all I want to do is go out, I want to go, I don't know, browse the web, This I don't want to do this, I don't care about this. Consciously make an effort to switch your brain and, and tell it to yourself in your head, no, this subject is awesome. I'm going to rock it, I'm going to understand it, and I'm the best at it. And keep self-convincing yourself through the entire time that you're studying for this. And if it's um, a technical subject where, say, there's a lot of formulas, you have to solve problems like um, calculus or linear algebra, for example, or some engineering class, um, and when you're solving the problem, keep pumping yourself to the, to the thought that you're going to get it. And every time you solve the problem, cheer for yourself and say hey I did great I am gonna rock this I understand this subject like no one else does that was a linear algebra for me um, when I started I don't really like math I'm just gonna throw it out there and, and so any subject that involves math was like torture to me I would cringe at this if I saw the formula and I'm like Ooh, I have to study this and I'm probably not gonna understand this Soon as I changed that mentality, I started to understand. Soon as I told myself, oh, here's the formula, well, I'm gonna rock it, I'm gonna understand this. So by the end of it, I got so good at linear algebra, I took an advanced class in linear algebra because I liked it so much, because I understood it. The only reason I understood it was because I self-convinced myself that yes, I'm gonna understand it. It's gonna be the best and most amazing class I ever taken. And it was. Tip number five. Tip number five goes mostly for people who were not born speaking English, so their English is not their first language, or maybe not even the second. Don't let anyone tell you that you cannot get a 4.0 GPA or you cannot get good grades in school or university just because you were not born speaking English. 
I am a good example of that. English is not my first language. When I came to Canada, I had no idea. I couldn't speak any English. It was scary. Um, once I got fluent in sort of um, street English or just a casual conversations, and then I, when I went to university, it was hard. It was a huge jump. The level between fluent street English to academic English is a lifetime. You go in into academic environment and you're so overwhelmed because the language is so much harder. Very hard to be at university, English speaking university. But you can do it. I had people telling to my face that, oh well, you shouldn't be doing so good because you're not native a speaker and why are you getting such good grades? Oh, like, come on. That's not nice to say, first of all, second of all, well, no one can tell you what you can do except yourself. If you put that limit on yourself, then yes, you cannot do it. But if you tell yourself, oh, I can do it and I don't care what other people say, then you can do it. Don't let anyone tell you that you can't. So the last tip is for everyone and it is to have fun. Have fun and don't put too many limitations on yourself because at university is the most um, liberating experience I've been through. It is a lot of fun and tell you why because at school it's a much more controlled environment uh, you teachers take attendance you have to go to classes um, it's much more regimented whereas the university is much more free nobody takes your attendance for most of the classes um, nobody's gonna tell you what to do or not to do you don't have to go to lectures you don't have to do an assignments if you don't have if you don't want to this is pretty much the end for uh, my tips, so if you have more tips, please leave me a message on what helped you to get to 4.0. Uh, please subscribe to my channel for more videos. If you want more videos on the study subject, on how to memorize more effectively or how to write essays more effectively, etc, 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 please send me a message, leave it below, leave your questions below in the comments. I will read them and try my best to accommodate everyone and we'll, I hope to see you in the next video.